Warning, the following interview is about a book called The Spiritual Consequences of the COVID Vaccine, written by Thomas Mayer. As such, it contains some sobering and graphic information. Ultimately, however, there is a happy ending. Thomas Mayer is German, and so the video has been heavily edited to make it more easily understood. Thomas was inspired by the work of Rudolf Steiner, an Austrian occultist, and claimed clairvoyant. According to Rudolf Steiner, there exists within every human being the potential for developing supersensory powers, and with these powers activated, the ability to awaken the higher self and attain knowledge of non-physical higher worlds. Thomas Mayer and the team that collected information for this research project each have had their supersensory powers activated and so were able to attain the information discussed in this interview through the use of supersensible perceptions. Hello, everybody. This is Renise McNeil, and I am absolutely privileged today to bring to you a man that has done some incredible research on a topic that is very much on our minds. In fact, today it is quite uh, a synchronicity in the respect that a documentary has been released about the very physical aspects of the vaccine. But that is only one part of the equation. So today I have with me Thomas Mayer, who has written the book COVID Vaccines from a Spiritual Perspective. And we are very blessed to have the result of a lot of research that he is going to share with us today to explain a little bit more about the spiritual consequences. So hello, Thomas. It's so lovely to have you. Hello. Thank you for inviting me. I'm, as I said, we're very, very blessed to have you. And you are in Switzerland and I am in Thailand. So we are going around the world today to talk about this subject. Uh, I'm living in Germany and Switzerland and I'm teacher in anthroposophic meditation. So that means I give workshops the whole year and I'm also author and I have written a lot of books about spiritual themes. And I'm also organizing a network of people who are trained in super sensible perception. And I'm trying to bring the people together. And this network is sometimes quite helpful. And it was very helpful by by the research about the spiritual effects of the COVID vaccines. And I know I want to show you a little bit. A Before moment. you do that, Thomas, can you explain to us what super sensible means? Oh, super sensible means it's a direct perception of beings or powers in the ether world, in the astral world, or the spiritual world. And it's possible if you are training your organs of supersensible perceptions to get something. But everyone has it. Everyone has supersensible perceptions. If you enter a new apartment, you have some feelings because you are in contact with the beings who <clears throat> are living in the apartment <clears throat> not only with the incarnated beings there's an atmosphere and this atmosphere is a super sensible perception and if you train your perception then it can be clearer and clearer so is, is this is a little bit an explanation but um, there is real continuous meditation work and the continuous uh, shadow work necessary yes. because because there is always a question do i bring my own my own stuff in it or or are i am really objective so that's, that's always a question but it's but by training you can get it clearer i like to think of it thomas as 
my husband is a remarkable guitar player and like everybody everybody has the possibility of pay, playing the guitar i can pick up a guitar but because i haven't spent years practicing the guitar my guitar playing is terrible and i think that these super sensible skills or super sensible perception are the same thing we all have some degree of clairvoyance we all have a feeling that the phone is going to ring and that it's our friend that's calling and all little little aspects of them but we don't pay attention to it but it, with the right training we can bring these facilities online yeah. more powerfully yeah and i'm quite near with anthroposophy and anthroposophy is a movement who uh, want to use the super sensible perceptions in a scientific way. So I would say that's the future of science, not only to look on the materialistic uh, level, but also to look on the other spiritual levels, because that's a whole reality. And yeah, and my pass passion is to bring forward the super sensible science. And when you say anthropophysy, basically, we're talking about the movement that Rudolf Steiner uh, brought about um, 100, a little bit over 100 years ago, that he, he was a huge advocate for spiritual science. And through my research of him, so many of his ideas have become more and more relevant than we could even imagine. <laughs> and his thoughts in terms of vaccines particularly have been startling in terms of his insight and so for those people that aren't necessarily familiar with anthroposophy or rudolf Steiner, that is something that i definitely suggest that you look up and that is the i said essentially the body of work that thomas has built upon for us today so thomas go ahead and show us what you've got my dear yeah so and now i want to show you um some some quote from Rudolf Steiner. One moment. Uh, here you can see the title of my book, COVID Vaccines from a Spiritual Perspective, Consequences for the Soul and Spirit and for the Life After Death. And the book is about 400 pages. I wrote it in Germany one year ago, and it needs some time until it was translated. And in this book, I collected reports from, from over 50 colleagues, which has super sensible experiences with uh, effects of the COVID vaccine. So that means it's not only my work. I collected a lot because that gives me a round picture. And on the right, there are two quotes from Rudolf Steiner, and I think they are quite actual. It's from 1917, and he said, yeah, that people will get vaccines against spiritual ideas, and the materialistic physicians will be entrusted with the task of expelling the souls from the mankind. So he could see it in the future, what, what will happen, because it was in the thinking in this time. And I know this quotes about um, a lot of years, and I always thought, nah, it, it's something white in the future. <laughs> Perhaps in my next incarnations, I will be confronted with such things. But now uh, I see it in another way, what is happening today. I will explain what we found with the effects of the vaccines. This graphic here, we try to, in a graphic way, how your aura is organized. And you have to think that we have a lot of spiritual bodies. The matter body is this man, which is, yeah, here you can see. And that's the only reality where the materialistic science is good. But it's only a small part of our human being. And we had 
as a spiritual matrix of our material body, we call it physical body or phantom body. We had an energetic body, uh, etheric body. It's the same with, in China, say they qi. In um, I think that's quite quite common. That's a, that's a level of the etheric body. And then we had the astral body. That's a body of our feelings. And then we had the eye, and the eye is our spiritual imprint. And here you can see how it should be normal, in a normal way. And very important is the angel behind us, that's here in yellow. He is accompany you over your whole life and over the incarnations. Even though these ideas may seem quite esoteric, there are people that speak to this in ways that um, are very taken for granted. For instance, Wayne Dyer, who is, I think, an American author, says we're not physical bodies, we're spiritual beings having a physical experience, right? And so this diagram very much speaks to the idea that there is more going on than just the material. And Rupert Sheldrake, who we just talked about, literally did a video about the phantom body. And the phantom body shows up very clearly for people when, for example, they lose a limb and they still feel the pain or they still feel the itching. So even though we are in a materialistic paradigm, these ideas are still prevalent within our paradigm. People are familiar with the phantom body. And I also know very much that many people have had an experience of their angel in their lives. I know for a fact that I had a terrible car accident and I had a broken neck and uh, my husband was trying to get me out of the car. And my angel spoke to me and said, do not move in a, in a voice that was so loud and so real that I didn't move, if I'd listened to my husband, I would have been a quadriplegic today. So these things, although they may seem esoteric, I believe people can have an understanding for them at some level. Yeah, of course. And I think uh, everyone um, has a feeling of his angel also, if he do not use this word, if you uh, feel really in love with yourself, and if you have the feeling, I am in a good resonance with myself, that means that you are also in a good connection with your angel. We uh, are constantly in contact with him. I hadn't ever thought of it in that term, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And also, if we sleep, if you go, go to sleep and uh, lying in bed, you can think that uh, your angel is carrying you through the night. You are not going alone through the night. Your angel is carrying you into the spiritual world when you get to sleep. And, That's such a beautiful thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and something uh, you could easily perceive. Normally, um, children are totally surrounded by her angel. They are standing in her angel. But uh, in the, uh, when you get older in uh, puberty, is this right, in, uh, after 15 years or so, then the angel is uh, steps one uh, steps back because uh, the soul should um, experience freedom. And, uh, and as an adult, we have to create an active contact to our angel. It's not like children. Children are always surrounded, but I, you could really experience it uh, easily. And another thing in, um, which is quite important is our, we, we call it um, body elemental being. So it's here, so it's here, the green, the green part, but it's really a schematic, a schematic graphic. Don't take it too physically because it's quite different from person to person. And what does this 
the body elemental being doing he he is leading consciousness for your whole body and uh, he he is organizing everything <laughs> so uh, and if you are um, ill you can start by asking your body elemental being oh what's uh, why i am ill what shall i learn from the illness and you really can go in a communication and then another a third quite important part is here the brown i called it double ganger or you can also they disappeared parts of your soul <laughs> old karma that's all in this double ganger and and this double ganger this brown part is normally beside you and our whole work our whole life is to work with this double ganger. So we are also all, he is always with us. That's normal. This, what you're showing us here is like an esoteric anatomy. And this is the way that it should be structured. And what you're going to show us now is how the vaccine has changed the esoteric anatomy. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, that, that's what I want to show you. And we find that people who who take the COVID vaccines, that something really um, strongly has happened. And you can see it in this graphic, members of the human being who are normally in contact spread, spread away so that the people are not really integrated anymore. So, that that means you you can see it here the angel is going away the so contact to your angel uh, is not so strong and a lot of people who take the vaccines uh, experience it by themselves that they say oh i i do not feel my connection to god i i i i'm lost i don't understand what's going on or or they could also experience that the meditation is not so deep anymore. And they had really to work over a long time to cre recreate the spiritual connection. And the spiritual connection is the connection to the angel because he is our first uh, partner in the spiritual world. And, and Thomas, what I want to say about that is that it's very interesting because a lot of people, people that don't, are not involved in spiritual practice or meditation, they might not even notice it because they never had a relationship. But in my line of work, I work with a lot of people that have that they do practice meditation. And I was shocked that people that are involved in that kind of work or healing work where they connect these types of people have very much noticed a disconnection in this regard. Mm -hmm. That's a problematic point. If you notice what the, the vaccine is doing with you, uh, then you could work on changing it and working on healing it. But if you don't notice it, you will do nothing and then uh, it stays on. That's a problematic point. And that's what I, I showed you the quotes from Rudolf Steiner in the beginning. That is meant that the connection between uh, spirit and soul and the physical body is blockaged. There's, uh, there's a cut off through, uh, could be through the vaccines. That's 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 a problem. Yeah, it's it's uh, you can think of that. Um, this COVID vaccines are a part of this transhumanism agenda who want to separate the soul and the spirit from the human bodies, from the incarnate bodies, so that you only have bodies without souls. <laughs> that, yes. that, it does not feel quite nice. <laughs> so. No. And, so and we and my colleagues did a lot of research. What is happening with the COVID vaccines? It's on the slide. I put some points on every part of the human body. There are effects. The chakras are blocked. The etheric body is often hardened and not swinging around. It should be flowing in your either body. And often they found 
that her clients after the vaccination are um, colder and they uh, could not really come in contact with, with the energy of, uh, of her clients. So it's, it's quite a, 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 a tough thing. A healer friend of mine today, right? So she is a, um, a physical healer of the body. And I was talking to her about your book. And the first thing I want to say about your book is your book is fantastic because you go into so many cases of healers and people that work with people, their lived experience of dealing with people with vaccines. So for example, my girlfriend who does body work, she can, she can feel things on my body that I'm not even aware of. She has a skill, a one of these um, activated perceptions that she knows exactly where my body hurts, even though I don't know, right? And so in your book, you have these people that are working with people all the time that are feeling their bodies, feeling their energies, feeling the flows, feeling the rhythms. And all of a sudden, their lived experience is that there is something very, very different when they are working with their patients now. And these are the things that you're talking about. And so they're using these organs of perceptions to, to ascertain that things like chakras are blocked and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, I try to bring a lot of concrete perceptions from different people in the book. And I collected a lot so that it's, that you really can get a feeling what it could be, and that you also uh, get a lot of ideas for your own perception. Yes. Because often you, it's necessary that you can hear something what another one uh, perceives to understand your own perception. That's, that was also one, one impulse by writing the book. And that's a little bit a summary of it. As we found that this gene-based COVID vaccines give an impetus to serious dam damage to the super sensible members of the human organism. And we also found it's really the vaccines we use in the Western country. We also could research a little bit about Sputnik V in Russia and about Sinopharm, which is a, a Chinese vaccine and it also very often used in South America. And this both vaccines do not have such a strong influence. They have an influence, but more like older vaccines. Though that means that citizens of the Western country really get the hard stuff. I and found that to be very surprising, Thomas. That was one of the things in the book that shocked me. I really wasn't prepared for the information that the Western world's vaccines had such a detrimental effect compared to the Russian and Chinese. I, I found that very surprising. Yeah. But I think it's, you also can find it on the physical level. I think it now it's clear that the Western vaccines uh, also have more medical side effects than the, than Sinopharm or, or Sputnik V. And we had a lot of dead people and, and illnesses and, and so on. But it's not, not the theme we want to talk, talk here in this. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yes. because we want more, more to, to look on the spiritual side of it. Yes. Oh, look, and, and as I said, there's a documentary uh, that just was released today that really does a fantastic job on the, the physical. But I have to say that there was a researcher that was looking at VARES, and he was doing a search on things like bad dreams, visions, and night terrors. And then there are all of these videos of people that are swatting away things. <laughs> they, it's as if they can see something before they fall over. And it's those types of things that give one the indication that there is something more going on than just 
the physical aspect of damage, right? And that's why I sought out your work is because I was trying to understand what seems to be the spiritual ramifications. And it seems to me that through the super sensible research that you and your colleagues have done, which is essentially utilizing your own organs of perception to see and feel things at a higher level than the mundane people can do, that you're able to actually, like you showed on that slide, show the physical, the impacts, the spiritual impacts on our, I want to call it spiritual bodies, but the layer of our spiritual bodies. Yeah, that's, that's a, a big question. And we have to work on the next uh, decades with this issue, I think. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it, it's really, it's really a deciding. I would say it's really a deciding point in the uh, for the future of humanity. Do we want to follow um, a transhumanism agenda, or do we want to be beings in freedom and whole beings with our the soul and spirit? I think that's that is really we are standing in a deciding point, and this vaccines are pushing us to really decide. Yes. So yes. it's also a challenge. That's also important by this whole matter. It's quite hard. And often people, they could not look really to reality because it's too harmful. But that's not the point for me. If the point is, it's a challenge and it's really necessary to confront the reality because then we can also learn something out of it. Yes, I think that you also make the point in your book that I find quite interesting that when you look at the people that resisted the vaccination, that these people very much saw it as a spiritual challenge. And that the people that said, no, I don't want it, had the feeling very, very deep inside at a soul level that they didn't want it. It wasn't a decision that was something that was made lightly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so is it, so is it. A lot of people really, um, if they think of the vaccinations, they feel, no, I, 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 I uh, it, it, it's wrong, it, it, it's wrong without arguments, they, but they has a deep intuition. But I, I could really understand because the vaccines, connected with spiritual beings. And that's another point we have to think of. That was and amazing to me, Thomas. So there was a part in your book when you were actually looking at the vaccines. Now, this might be a little bit advanced for people, but we've mentioned before demons and angels and that kind of thing. And so for the purposes of this interview, we're just going to assume that, that we're comfortable with their existence. But you're looking at the vaccine and you're finding that there are elementals within the vaccine designed to protect the elements of the vaccine. The sophistication, I can't even imagine the, the intelligence of the people who were able to create these things, Thomas. Yeah, of course, but but we 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 can. <laughs> that's that's always a problem if we create new things that we should always look on the spiritual levels. But it's it's not only the question with vaccines; it's a general question. With every new technology, uh, we do not only create something on the physical realm; we also create spiritual beings. And we attract spiritual beings. And it's a big problem if we are not aware of. Then it, it's like black magic ritual. It could be if we if we attract uh, bad, bad beings. When we're reading that, I wasn't sure if it was done deliberately uh, on purpose. But you're saying that when we are just by virtue of being creators ourselves that when we invent things we are either inviting or creating these elementals just as a natural course of being creator beings ourselves yeah 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 so so is it and to make it a little bit easier to understand you only can perceive your own thinking and 
if you perceive your own thinking in meditation, then you could experience that around every thought you are creating, there is an atmosphere. And it could be a warm atmosphere, an open atmosphere. That means that you are inviting angels or the love of Christ into your thinking. But if, uh, but you also can think in a uh, in an aggressive way, closed thoughts or uh, hurting thoughts, and that means you are inviting demons. I think that experience everyone can have, and but that is quite flexible with our thinking. But we, if we are creating a new technology, it's uh, more constant. And though we have technologies who are always bringing bad spirits into our earthly life, that, that's, that's the main thought. Though that means we uh, really have to be careful what we are creating and we should always look if the right spirits around a new creation, but that's not normal. No university will you you will be learn something about it. And though we are totally blind, totally in in a deep sleep in this point, and I think that's the main reason why with this COVID vaccines really bad entities outside of our Earth evolutions are attracted. In anthroposophy, we called it uh, soratic beings. In other traditions, there are other names of it. But the main idea is they are not a part of our Earth evolution. They are coming from other spiritual fields out of our Earth evolution. But we are attracting them, and they really had an quite bad influence. So that's, that's, a, that's a quite main point. I, uh, I know that it's not easy to understand. That was the reason why I wrote a long book <laughs> with a lot of stories and explanations. So it's possible really to deep in. As I was saying, my dear, before we started the official interview, because of my history um, and being a student of history and looking at lots of different disciplines, a lot of the ideas in this book I have familiarity with. And as you said, there's different terminology. So for example, when you're talking about these beings, the story that unfolds for me is a Gnostic story, the creation of the Archon um, through the, the Gaia and the Sophia story and how they were created outside of the identity of or the created outside the plan all right the, the plan for humanity and it, it's not exactly how rudolph or anthroposophy explains it but it's an, an idea that's quite akin that these are highly intelligent beings that don't have the same soul perhaps as us but they very much want to uh, come into our realm yeah, they want to learn something, but then we have really to give give them what they needed. But that's that's uh, we are far away <laughs> by releasing and developing the black entities. Of course, we should do, but first we have to acknowledge them and to see that what they are. Of course. But that's also uh, all a lot of future stuff. But now we are starting to learn to handle to to handle with it because we are all now confronted with these effects of this COVID vaccines. Also, if we are not, if we don't take the vaccine by ourselves, we are confronted with the spirits of which are attracted by the other people. So we we cannot stay by side. We have to start to learn how to work with them. And the first point is to, to understand that they are. That they know that they <laughs> exist. How can we work that with they... them if we don't even acknowledge them? That's a great point. Yeah, yeah. And the second point is to really to strengthen 
your own spiritual connection because if you are connected with this Christ, if you are connected with Archangel, with Michael, with Raphael, or if you are re have you really have a deep connection with Buddha, then you can resist. Then you have um, as a power in your back that you can stay by your own and say, oh, that is a bad entity. Why are you here? And that's the second point we have to learn out of the situation. So it's not, it's not a terrible thing. It's a spiritual challenge. And I wrote a, a lot of chapters in my book, how to overcome the effects of the COVID vaccines. I try to make it quite concrete. But for one point, it's not an easy thing. Often, often it needs weeks and months by actively working really to overcome it. Yes. But, but it's possible. You do provide a pathway because there are a lot of people that very much regret the decision that they've made and they don't know what to do. And so you have provided us like you said, it's a challenge. It's a beautiful roadmap for us to unfurl into all that we are as humans. You're giving us the opportunity to leave, to leave the realm of just materiality and enter into the realm of spirituality and find ourselves there and strengthen ourselves there. And I can finally see this as a gift to us where before it was just something that was very scary. Thank you for bringing it, bring it forward to this, this point, because that's the most important point, because it does not help if you stay in depression. We have to take it as a challenge, and we can do something. And it's possible that a vac vaccination bring forward our own spiritual path, our own spiritual connection and our strength. That's, that's possible in the end, but we have to do it. It does not, it will not come alone. We also spoke earlier about the idea of intention and how important intention is in this as well, that our intention alone can be very helpful in warding off the, the damaging effects. Yeah, of course, because with our intention, we, are, we let spiritual beings in our system or not. So that means if we had fear of getting ill, and this fear opens every door, those thoracic beings really can can come in our innerst in our innerst space. The intention is always on the spiritual level the most important, and it's not so important what you are saying. Or, or, or what something someone is saying that's not so important. Important is intention because you can use the same words without different intention, and it's it's totally another thing. And I think intention is another idea that is starting to work its way into the mainstream. I I feel like we are babies spiritually, Thomas. That we are really just starting to once again wake up to the idea that there is a whole other world that is available to us. And we're just starting to dip our toes into the idea of the spiritual ramifications of living our life. Things like morality and virtue. And like you said, you know, the Christ energies and things like intention. Rudolf Steiner, a hundred years ago, before. Bef the materialism that has creeped into our society since the warnings he gave a hundred years ago is startling. He was worried about our, how materially obsessed we were a hundred years ago. And we have gone a thousand percent since then, right? <laughs> like it's just, it's crazy yeah. how much more material we've become since Rudolf was talking about it. So now with this, this might be the thing to accelerate and open up the doors of our perception, if you will. And Good. instead of being very, very depressed about the future of humanity, which I have been, this book, although it goes into very graphic detail 
about the challenges we're facing, it does shine a light. And for that, I am most grateful because the number one thing I see is that people are looking for a way out, my dear. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. But I want to bring one other point forward. And for me, it's the most important point, the effects in the life after death. Yes, we and, haven't even got there yet. Yes. Yes, because that, that also was a starting point going into the research. And it was when the vaccine started, my first encountering this um, a person who, who died with vaccination was quite terrible because we found them totally in a despaired situation and bounded on a etheric body and it, it was like like a cement or, or asphalt. So it it, it really uh, it was a terrible concrete. Situ- concrete, concrete, that's the right word. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes yes. I'm I'm looking to find the right English. <laughs> you are doing a fabulous job, my love. Do not worry yeah. about it. But yes, they were bound into the earth sphere and very, very heavy like concrete. Yeah. And she was quite disappeared and there was no light, no connection to the angel. Normally, if you're going to die, it's it's fabulous because normally you can come in a direct contact contact with high spiritual beings and it's a great situation it's better than to be on earth normally but there was nothing and then we found that this situation of this woman was an effect of the covid vaccination and we try to help her and to release it but we did not really succeed and we could not really help her because we, it was a group, a group of people we worked together because we did not understand which beings involved with, with this vaccines and, and we did not have a concept of the whole thing that really limits, limited our healing possibilities. And this affects for the life after that, we found very often. So that means that these vaccines could bring the uh, human development to an end point. To an end point because it's not going forward anymore. If so long you do not get impulses from people looking for that people and praying for them, or perhaps also from the angel world, I uh, also could come impulses. But at first, it's like an endpoint of the human development. But it's not bad. I tell this not to create fear. That's a reality, and it's not bad because it could be a turning point. It could be a turning point to come out of this materialistic realm. And perhaps it must be, you must go in the materialistic thing on the deepest point to really understand what it is. (laughs) Uh, Yes, indeed. We're doing a good job of that, aren't we? Gosh. Yeah, so that's, that's how I could see it now. It's in the same way often if someone drinks a lot of alcohol at some point he has really to break down and then he could start often is it so and then he could start to come out of the situation so that's uh, how now i i see it but the thing is that the situation of the dead souls now really quite bad better than for 10 years or for 20 years or for 100 years because we you, you can think we are surrounded our earth is surrounded of a lot of souls who are stuck in in this vaccine beings are stuck in uh, traumatas of their soul there are different possibilities 
to stuck in the past in the life after that. But we are we are really surrounded. That's also important to understand. And we always have to go through black clouds of of souls in a bad situation to come to get the light of the spiritual world. I I know that there is a, a lot of questions arise if I tell it in such a short in a short way. That that's the reason why I described it very in very concrete examples in the books and I also try to to explain so that that it's possible to get an overview and so Thomas the books are fantastic I mean you go into as I said so much detail it's very very clear you give many case studies and one of the things that I was also surprised is that it's not just these COVID vaccines there are other medications that impact the soul and the death process as well which was complete news to me yeah, that, that's another point. It gets also quite clearer for me by, by doing this research that perhaps um, chemotherapy for a, ca a cancer often had similar effects, but also other, other medications could have. We have always a paper about the side effects of a medication, but we also... On this paper, it, we, uh, we should always stand what it could be side effects in the life after death, because that's <laughs> that's for me the most important. It, and it's so hard to see that a lot of old people in the last month before they die, they get the terrible, terrible stuff. And this one and this one uh, for the good for the people, but it's not for the good. because. If you die, it's not over, it goes further. And everything what we have taken in our incarnated life, it's our gift for the life after death. One of the things that our culture is particularly terrible at is the entire death process and afterlife process. It is ancient cultures and shamanic cultures have paid so much attention to it. And it's something that we just go, na, 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 and don't even think about. And the ramifications of our actions, Thomas, you brought to light. And it is very important. I mean, I think it's something we very, very much need to start paying attention to. I know my mother died of cancer and she was given chemotherapy at the end. She fought it. Um for most of the time that she was ill, but when they put her in hospital to die, they gave her chemotherapy. And I know that I tried to have people with super sensible perception reach out to her and they couldn't. And now it makes sense that possibly the chemotherapy disconnected her and that's why they couldn't sense her anymore. So yeah. that's quite a worry. Yeah. Yeah, so so is it, and we have to be aware of it because then we uh, then it's possible to do healing work for it, and also to to heal. So I want to I want to give you two concrete examples. Yes, uh, one one friend, uh, one one friend. He is was is quite a spiritual and an advanced anthroposophist, and he he has a fine uh, perception. And he also read my book about the effects of the COVID vaccines, but he gets so much pressure from his family, so he he took the vaccine. And some, some weeks later, and he not, not only one, I, he took three times. And then some weeks later, after the third vac vaccination, he, he get a heart attack falling from the bicycle that in a good uh, in a good age so and we then we get in a meditative contact because we want to look how, how is it and he was and we found him in a desperate situation he has no orientation he could not he has no light for orientation nothing 
And in the end, we when we then concentrated on if either body and this phantom body, we found yes, he has this COVID side effects we also experienced by other dead people. But that was is an interesting point now was because he has such a spiritual power, it was enough to make him clear what it is. Because then he gets the orientation and he understands themselves in which situation it is, and then then his eye power is coming back and he started to work. And we did not really have to do more. By other souls, uh, by helping, we have to do more. And we have to do this releasing work with the Socratic beings. And we have to do it by yourself because the dead person normally cannot, but he could. So that's, uh, that's one, uh, only one, one example that also means it's not so easy to take the vaccines. And also, if you think, okay, it's clear, I, I, I can handle it, it's not clear that you can handle it. Yes, yes, yes. So it, and, another, and another example, it was a priest. Yeah, he died in a good age. And we found him also in a, in a cut-off situation. And we need a, and it needed a long time to understand what it is. And when we say to him, make the service, you have done your whole life. But he answered, no, I cannot. I, I have no connection to Christ. I cannot make the service now. Hold, hold the service, the ritual. I, I cannot hold the service. I, I, I have no connection to Christ. So we did not really understand in the end. In the end, the turning point was to think of that he get in, in hospital a lot of pain medication. But by thinking of that, then it would clear, yes, he gets some pain medication who has this effects to him. And after getting it clear, and then also feeling this pain medication beings, and working with it, his power is coming back. And then, then he could come back also in this power of holding the service he has done his whole life. So it's only, I only want to, to make um, some concrete, two concrete examples from the last weeks. Yeah, that's am I mean, they're amazing stories, Thomas. And, and I mean, the ramifications, though, for the people that don't, the people that don't have you to help them, that don't even know that they have a problem. I mean, yeah. we have to get it out there. We need people to understand. Yeah. And and that's and it's quite important to to uh, to have such um, relationships with this um, medications in your mind because if you don't um, understand it, you cannot help. Yes. 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 Wow. So, and but but the a, a important point is to. I think it's a turning point of materialism. It's a turning point of materialism and the turning point needs that in the individual development, spiritual development, the, uh, the souls come to an end point that they really in a, stay in a catharsis. It, it is hard, but I cannot, it's not, it was not, it's not my idea. I only, uh, uh, you see I it. Only, Try to understand what I perceive in reality, yes. but that is a good point. That is a good point, but it, it's a development from every individual soul. Mm. It, we cannot do it uh, for everyone. Everyone has to has to find his own turning point. You know, it's interesting because Steiner does predict the future of humanity. Right? He maps out. The next race, you know, the next race and the next race of humanity, just like there was the Egyptians and the Atlanteans and all of that before. And, you know, possibly like you're suggesting, the timeline is just getting <laughs> sped up and we have to move into our next evolution of, uh, of humans that have these super sensible organs of perception developed and are more comfortable with the 
both the 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 spiritual aspects of materiality as well as the material aspects but um even though it is a challenge i believe that there are many of us who are up to the challenge thomas particularly now that you have laid it out for us so clearly because i know myself i had an inkling there was more going on and there are many people out there talking about this being a spiritual battle but beyond saying those words nobody had elaborated on the details of it we didn't understand what the field was we didn't understand what the tools were and you have done us a great benefit by mapping all of this out for us mm -hmm. so thank you <laughs> yeah thank you i think that was a good uh, a good word to the end of our interview or <laughs> well before we do i would like to just express that we have literally just scratched the surface of your book there is so much there to really understand um, about the vaccines, about our esoteric body. Uh, once you buy this book of Thomas's, you will have a completely new understanding of who you are, whether you've had the vaccine or not. Um, and particularly if you've had the vaccine, you do have an understanding now of the challenge that you're faced with. And as Thomas pointed out, it's not just the people that have had the vaccine. We're all susceptible to these influences. So I say, go out, buy the book, do your homework <laughs> and bless this man for his contribution to humanity. So thank you, my dear. Now tell them your website so they can come and get it at your website. Yeah, my, my website is um, anthroposophische-meditation.de and there is also an English, an English part in it. I'm going to just post it because that's a bit tricky. <laughs> I'll post it, my love. I'll put it on the link so that they can just click yeah. it. And link, um, yes. I bought Thomas's book twice. I liked it so much. I bought the uh, digital version on Amazon and I bought the physical version at his website. So if you can't wait, you can get the Kindle version right away. And um, thank you so much for your time today, Thomas. Thank you for explaining it. Thank you for writing this book. Thank you for being such a hero for humanity. And I very much appreciate your time. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And thank you, Vanessa, for organizing this interview. Oh, it's my pleasure, my dear. It's, it, you're doing God's work, my friend. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs>